So now that we want to post something, let's just make sure we're all looking at the same thing. Click on the name of your business right there to go back to the main home page of your business, your business page. And then we've got here, write something. Question? Question right there, guys? No? Okay. So here it's saying post a status. So you can post any any bit of text. Again, go back to what we talked about on Twitter, Facebook, etc. You can post uh, a photo so we can upload individual photos, create albums, slideshows. You can explore that on your own. You need photos or video. What's different here on Facebook than the other networks What's different here on Facebook is that you can also add events, milestones, and other things. If you click right here, event, you have event, milestone, and a note. So let's say you want to create an event that this Saturday is the get-together at the business. You can go look at this on your own, but event will have you fill in a bunch of things. Not everyone needs this or wants this, but you add a picture, description, location, when is it on, all of that stuff. So that's something that's not available on the other networks. We have here event. So I'm sharing an event. <clears throat> and you can have you can invite people to the event. Friends and family, they can share the event, reach more people. People can go to the event page and comment and share their own photos about it and it can be a whole big to do. Not everyone needs this, of course, so I won't go into much detail, but you can explore that as posting an event. You also have Milestone. This one is sort of like a self-congratulatory kind of post. We've sold our 100th cupcake. So I write a title, I can write location optional, when it happened, a little story, add a photo. And it shows up as a post here. It looks different than the other kinds of posts. It's got a little flag, it's self-congratulatory. You might think about doing those once in a while because these stand out. They are literally different than the other kinds of posts. Something is different, it stands out, people will see it, people might like it, comment, share on it. So milestones. Anything can be a milestone. Yes? What is the uh, location? What is it showing up? This is a, exactly, it's a location. So let's say I was doing a milestone and I'm starting to write Balboa Park. It will give you a location that exists in Facebook. So when I create my business and I set it up as a location, my business could show up there. The point of that then is when someone sees that on their mobile device, they just shared a new, lo a new event or milestone with a location. They tap on it and get a map, driving directions to your business. So not everyone will need to lo set location or can set location because I've got a virtual business. I don't have a real location. And so this milestone happened at Balboa Park Station and people can get maps to it. Uh, I'm posting this milestone. Everyone can see it or I can hide it. Only myself photo, upload photo, etc. Note. This is pretty new. This is sort of Facebook's way to sort of do like blogging. A blog is just articles that I write on a regular basis. Facebook and most social media is much more for small consumption of information. A tweet is 140 characters. I don't have limits really on Facebook, Google+, etc. But I'm not going to sit and read seven paragraphs on Facebook. I want a quick view, picture, I like it, I'll read more. I don't like it, move on, what's next? So a lot of social media is quick consumption. Here Facebook, because all the networks try different things once in a while, Facebook here apparently is trying blogging. So here you can add a picture, they should have called it blog instead of note. I can add a picture, add a title, write something, 10 paragraphs. Good luck having people read it, but I can do that. Uh, I don't think it's as robust as other things, like even adding links and such. Maybe. What can I do here? A little bit of formatting, add a photo, what's this, code or something. So I haven't explored this enough. Really, you're not going to get people to read a lot on here. You're going to entice them and then get them back to your main uh, website. 
but those are a few things that you can share on Facebook that you can't on the others. They're under events, milestones. And you might also have one, I believe it's called Deal. Does anyone see one called Deal or Coupon or something? Yeah. Coupon? If you see that, you can create a coupon. You can create a deal, offer. Not everyone has that. It depends on the kind of business you created and other factors, but that's an offer. That needs more setup, of course. It's like creating a coupon. Click here to get this coupon. You can explore that. Uh, Victor, on the note, how is that different from just a regular post? Is it presented differently? It's def definitely different. You're going to have a big old picture that, that sort of brands it. You're going to have a title area that also makes it different. You're going to have then here paragraphs, highlighting, bullet points, italics. I guess you can do links. So it'll look, it'll look different than a regular post. It has more formatting and style. And the same place as all of your stuff is, which is on the main screen of your of your page. When someone visits your page, all of your content will show up here. When someone follows you, all of their all of your stuff will show up on their timeline. Just like I'm seeing cookies and cups, Nabisco, etc. Your stuff will show on their wall, their timeline there. Uh -huh. yeah. um, often when people post a, a blog uh, or a link, they'll they'll just put like the picture and then just part of the mm -hmm. blog and you link it to the website. Um, would you recommend doing that over putting a whole note or like a whole blog post on your site? There might be some value to the note because it's so different, therefore it stands out, therefore it could give you more traffic. Very few of us, how many of us before today knew that the note existed? Uh, even I myself, I forget about it. That could be an advantage because it's so different than any other kinds of posts, it could have people enticed to actually interact. There's no wrong answer. That's why you want to try different things. You will get insights and you will see, my notes are doing much better than my links. My videos are doing worse than my regular old paragraphs, my regular old statuses. So that's why we try different things and see which works. Yes? Yeah, it looks like that once I'm writing the note, what I want to do first is write something like, look at this, and then I selected it. Once it's selected, it pops up to make it bold, italic, or link it. And now that has an active link there. So that might be cool. I, I want to look at it myself also. I want to look at notes, how they might be more valuable. Here under status, you're not limited to only posting text, because what, what you just said right here, this is a valuable thing to do. Let's, let's do this. Let's go, just so that we all see this, go to the website PMD Interactive slash blog. This is my company's website with our blog. We write blog articles there, you know, several hundred words. We're not going to put all 100 words on a Facebook post. I want to share this on my Facebook post with a little preview to entice them to read the rest. There's a couple of ways to do it. I'll show one way right here. So let's go to my blog, my company's blog, PMD Interactive dot com slash blog. If you've got your own website, you can do it with your own website, but I'm just showing you here. I'm on the blog. There are various articles. One of the previous, one of the recent ones is how to use the brand new social network, Peach. Yes, there's a brand new social network to learn. Here's an article on learning it. So you probably see oftentimes on websites, especially blogs, a way to share on social media. This one is Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, more. Sometimes it's a very direct way that you see something and you click share on Facebook. Unfortunately, oftentimes that share goes over to your personal Facebook. 
it's telling me here, log in to Facebook, to my personal <coughs> Facebook. Sometimes it goes to personal. Well, the way to make sure it goes to your business page is, I'm going to click on the, the, the picture of the link, I'm going to go to read the full article, so I'm actually reading the full article here, and then I will copy the address. This is how we can guarantee that a certain link is shared to a specific page. I can copy the link, so just select it, right-click copy. I go back to Facebook, and then on status there's no button that says share link, but I can share a link under status. Under status, write something, I click there, right-click, paste, It'll take the link, and what it'll do is it'll also create a very cool preview for me. <coughs> it'll look for a picture on the post and grab it as like the enticing picture. It'll take a couple of words from the article and paste them there. I can edit this. I can click here and change that to be whatever I want. Change it, press enter, or I guess click outside here. I can then edit this description. It took out this, but maybe it was too long and it cut off my thought. So I can click here and edit that down to this, the right space. And now what I'm about to do is share something from my website over on Facebook with a very cool little bit of branding. And I can still go back to this status area here and write a little bit more. Check out our colleagues PMD Interactive on how to use Peach. I can still write some commentary, some status to the thing I'm about to share. I could take advantage of this status area to say, to ask a question. Asking questions, building conversation is very valuable in social media. Have you seen this yet? Or what's your favorite social network? We like Peach. You know, something to get the ball rolling, the dialogue. This is the thing about that this is a little harder to teach. I can teach you how to set up the networks, do's and don'ts, but what to post, that's harder to teach. Because what I tell one person doesn't apply to someone else. And so, if you try yourself different techniques, if you also read other tutorials, look up online, what should I share on Facebook? How to use Twitter? You'll get lots of opinions. They're all right, they're all wrong. But you need to try things. So here I'm trying to elicit some dialogue. What's your favorite social network? This obviously does not apply at all for this business. Victor's Bakery, why am I sharing this on Victor's Bakery? I should be showing a blog post about a great recipe. I'm just showing you that any link on any website, yours or someone else's, <coughs> you can take their address, borrow their address, and paste it into your post and share it to your people, your followers, your likes. So my own article, I'm sharing it further out to more people on my Facebook, my one like. So that's pretty cool. Let's say I have something that I want to, to share like that. I can then simply click Publish, and it goes out right now to everyone of my followers, basically, which is one. Instead of Publish, I've got a white triangle here. I can save the draft so I can get back to it later. If I do save it to the draft, you don't have to do that, but if I save it to the draft, those are back on my publishing tools. Everything that I've published or drafted is under publishing tools, so you don't have to set it to publish, but that's back over here on drafts. And I can go back to edit it.
in addition to publish or draft, I have backdate. This is not that useful to most people, but think about it like this. Let's say I've had my Victor's Bakery and it's been open for one whole year. And on that and our on our anniversary day, we were so busy on that day, we were in the shop for 12 hours and we sold so many cupcakes and we forgot to post anything about our our, our birthday. So the next day we're going to post a little congratulatory happy birthday to ourselves. Well, it's one day late. I can backdate it and set it to a previous date in the past. So again, not that useful for most people, but if you want to post something as if it was posted yesterday or last week or month or whatever, last year, I can do that under backdate. And then we've got schedule just to see how this looks like if you click the triangle and select schedule then it says okay select the date and time in the future where you want this post to publish that's what I'm saying about you don't have to be chained to this thing what you can do is you can set a weekend time for yourself to then be sorry this is still the social media class um, what you can do here is you can set a time in the future you can set yourself up on Saturday to publish something this Friday next Thursday next Monday spend one day to set this up in the future and um, you can put it pretty far in the future you know set this up to make sure it loads on April 1st this is gonna be my my April Fool's post you can set it to the future date and time and such and then we've got distribution schedule stop feed distribution that's a super fancy way of saying when does it expire so if I am going to publish this today, if I am going to publish this today, like let's say at 1 o'clock, but then I only want it to be visible for the weekend, I set, I set schedule here, and it'll be for this day, or well, actually for, uh, let's say, Monday 6 a.m. So now this is going to be visible for a few days over the weekend, and it'll then automatically unpublish itself. Question? The events have a thing like that as well, that you can only set it for a certain amount of time. Because of fact, I tried to save because I want to publish that moment. Yeah. Hmm. Let me check that. Let's say I am adding an event. We do have date and time. They do have an end time right there. Started at this time, ended at that time. So it does have that end. And here we have draft. We do have the ability to draft it and schedule it. Maybe because it's just in the business, because it's in the personal. Hmm. Possibly. There are differences in personal and business. That's why we want the business one, definitely. So those are some of those details there. Publish it right away, schedule it future, schedule it past, draft it, etc. You have also this little globe. Set that to public or set it to a specific demographic. Remember, we can target each individual post to whomever we really want to target to. You won't get that ability if you didn't set that under your settings. Go back to your settings and turn it on, and then you can target it to a demographic. Question? Under um, let's see, it should be there right away because what I'm... You have to type it manually. You have to type, click here and type 7 and then type here 33 and type here AM. It would be nice that it gives you an actual drop down and such, but you have to type it manually. Boost post, I'll mention that in a moment. Then we've got add a feeling. So you can attach a feeling to this. And you've got all of these celebrating, listening, more. You can add all of these uh, interests, basically. And that's also to help 
your stuff get found when people express an interest in these things. Happy, sad, inquisitive, listening to the Ramones, watching uh, The Bachelor, whatever. When they're doing all of this stuff, Facebook is collecting all of that. And then, so if you're attaching this stuff to your post as well, that helps you get discovered. Someone that really likes a certain topic and you've put that topic into your post, your post could show up to them as well. Sure, it could be valuable. I could put here, as a business, this is how you have to decide the voice of your social media. Is your voice going to be about I or us? Is it going to be fun language, stoic language, contractions, full words? You have to decide how you communicate. And part of that communication is put to put feelings into you know, your post. This post is excited, excited to share this. And therefore, other people that have shared that interest and such can find your content. You can attach a location. So if you did add a location into Facebook, if you set yourself up as a local business, as a location, with a full address, a fully verified address that they called you to verify, you'll show up here. And you start putting your address. And the point of that is that then people will get an active link to your page. Set a date and time. This one is kind of like related to backdating and such. I hardly use it, so don't worry about it. I don't fully see the value of this date and time. I would rather use the schedule or the backdate. And so we had target certain demographics. And another way to do it here also is this narrow the potential newsfeed audience. This little target, we should use a better icon for that, but. Uh, target on that and again here's another spot for you to fully target it to the people that would care most about your product because there's 1.5 billion people you're targeting that you could possibly reach you're a needle in a haystack you want to target so there's of course a lot of nuances still to talk about but the idea is content post content the question comes up can I post the same thing that I shared on Twitter to Facebook Sure. A better answer is you should share different content on different networks. That is double the work, I know. But you want to hit people on all of the networks that they're at. And each network has its own style, its own demographic. Literally, Twitter, 140 characters to get your point across. Facebook, for all intents and purposes, no limit. You could write and write and write. Aren't people going to read that? No but you still want to create enough content and enough style in your Facebook posts for your Facebook audience. I don't know my Facebook audience yet. That's why you're going to try to use social media on a regular basis for the insights to tell you, for you to figure this out organically. <clears throat> um, any questions on posting anything so far? Let's say that I did post this. Now this is a fake test page, so it doesn't matter what I post here. Let's say I posted this. I published it. I published it right now. Nothing about back or future dating it. I, it's ready. It's published. All my one followers see it. I still have the problem of getting an audience, right? An audience to, to see my stuff. Partly building the audience by me liking pages and content, I will get likes and follows back. But here's the big negative, the big negative about Facebook. There's a lot of positives about Facebook. The big negative is that it's going to be harder and harder for your business page to reach its audience. Facebook itself is making it harder for you as a business to reach an audience. In the old days, simply getting a like on your page was what you were going for. You wanted to get likes, 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 because that's a follow. And when someone followed me, my stuff would show up on their home page here, just like I'm seeing Cookies and Cups. Now, I follow Cookies and Cups. I followed Nabisco. I followed a couple of others. And their stuff is not showing up here yet. It may never show up. Facebook is actively making it harder for companies to reach an audience, unless you use the great equalizer, which is? Money. 
Unfortunately, the best way nowadays to reach an audience on Facebook is to pay for it. I'm not talking about buying likes. That's fake and spam. I'm talking about what they euphemistically call boosting your post. It's going to tell you everywhere here, promote your website, not for free. Boost your post, not for free. Share your page, promote your page, not for free. It's very cynical to say, oh, I can't reach an audience anymore without paying for it. That's convenient. Yes, that is the truth of it. That is the way Facebook is going now. I've seen it over the years. We used to have to, we used to not need to invest, literally, in Facebook. We would post cool stuff, share it, we'd get likes, we'd get traffic, we'd get sales for clients. Now it's down. That tactic is down. What's going up is boosting posts, paying for more visibility, paying for more placement. And sometimes you hear these scare tactics about Facebook is going to start charging us to use Facebook. For regular people, no. For businesses, it has happened, it is happening, it will be happening. So the, honestly to say, you're going to need to put aside a budget which can be as little as one dollar. With one dollar, suddenly you'll reach 150 people, or whatever it is value of the day. But now you're going to start to invest a little bit in boosting your posts and reaching more of an audience because let me show you here with this client insights reach this is for a month this is showing from February whatever to today the light orange is organic which is non paid reach the dark orange is paid reach this is reaching almost 2,000 people without paying. This is reaching 4,000. This is reaching 10,000 people by paying. And this is the modern way to use Facebook. We do have to pay for it. I'll show in detail a bit, just a moment, but start to process that. This is the way we have to really use Facebook now. Question? Does it work on the same concept as paying for keywords that you very similar in that you're paying for more visibility, you're paying for AdWords to get your more eyeballs to see your website with these keywords. Very similar here, except that it's also very, very targeted because we can set budgets and set multiple segments and say, for this demographic I'm paying $5, for this one I'm paying $20, and I'm targeting it to these specific people at this time and such. It is very powerful. I do have to give them a lot of credit. It is very effective. Uh, these values that we're seeing here about reaching more people for this client it does translate to more sales of tacos you know this is a real client that sells Mexican food and when we do these posts that are paid and such it does reach to the cash register and they see more sales question Okay. so just to show you this is what we need to think about So I'm gonna go back to show you how do we actually do it I've posted something and as I'm posting, it's also c suggesting to me, think about boosting it, think about paying for more views. My recommendation is to first post something and then boost it. Because this is sort of like spinning plates. I'm about to write what I'm going to write. I still have a bunch of settings to set. I go to boost, I accidentally leave the screen, and I lost everything that I wrote. It's still temporary unless I saved it as a draft. I recommend craft your post, publish it, future publish it, and then select to boost it. Because if you, oops, accidentally close the boost screen, you didn't lose everything you were crafting. So let's say I, I wrote this and I want more people to see it. I can click on boost post, and yes, it will ask you for a credit card or a PayPal or whatever. This is going to be real money, not Facebook bucks real money. Bitcoin. Bitcoin not at the moment yet. But uh, here, okay, I'm going to share this. It's going to get sent off to desktops, computers, and mobile computers. Um, what's my audience that I'm reaching for? Uh, you can create multiple segments, which is audiences, and I'm setting it to the fall 2015 audience, but I've got other audiences, my blogger audience, my well-to-do clients, healthy living audience. I can create audiences here, create new audience. And that's basically here, which we've seen before. 
this location, these cities, these interests. So I'm creating a target audience. I can create multiple target audiences. Um, but I can only attach one target audience at a time per post. But I can create multiple posts, multiple target audiences. So I can edit an audience, create an audience. Let's say I chose the well-to-do clients. I defined that by people in California, 35 to 45, that were interested in these things. And I could also do select La Jolla. So people in the location of La Jolla. That have an interest in finance. And there we go. So I'm I'm reaching toward that audience. Oh, also here, 25 miles. Okay, so I'm reaching. I'm trying to go to that audience. Everyone uses Facebook, so there's huge audiences to tap into. This is who I'm trying to tap into. Budget. Here it's suggesting a starting point of twenty dollars. With twenty dollars, I could reach about a thousand to two thousand people out of about eighty-nine thousand people that I've targeted up here. There's a possibility of all of the audience that I created could be up to 89,000 people. But the way I narrowed it down and the budget that I placed, it's about 11 to 2,800. Yes? You changed the budget to $15. Would it tell you what you want to use? Yes. If you change it to other values, it will tell you. Oh, if I spend 1,000, look how many more people I reach. Are those just impressions, though? These are impressions. These are impressions. Um, choose your own. I could put $15. Still a good amount. I could put $1. 540 people. Even with $1, I can reach some amount of people. Question? So, for that $1, is that just good for that one post that one time? Is that right? Yeah. Because... Not one time, but if we look further here, I put one dollar, and one dollar will only really work for one day. If I put in, you know, ten dollars, then I can spread that out to seven days, because it'll use approximately a dollar forty-two per day to reach more people. And these are all impressions. Remember, we've got impressions and conversions. This is simply that it's going to be shown to it to about seven hundred to nineteen hundred people. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Around 700 people might see this, and I've currently got zero people followers. 700 with 10 bucks. But that still doesn't mean they're going to click buy now, or read, or donate. This is still up to you to craft a great message to entice people to further actually follow through. That is still something that is hard to teach. I can teach these details and the you know the foundational aspects that I can't teach you how to make your business successful with what you post on Facebook. I can give advice and guidance and such about asking questions and putting good pictures and photos and videos and such, but that's still up to you what you're gonna do to entice people. And then this about setting budgets and boosting posts is very valuable. You can do one dollar. Now with one dollar it will only work for one day because it, it's going to tell you. You need at least seven dollars to reach seven days. You need at least fourteen dollars to run for fourteen days. And notice it's suggesting start with twenty dollars or whatever. You can put whatever amount. Let's say I do want to do twelve dollars for seven days. So Facebook will do its best to try to look at all of its data to show your post to the right people at the right time that they most likely will follow your message about clicking or reading or viewing or whatever. There is an extra tracking feature. This is the extra optional step to fully see the whole process. At the moment, Facebook can only tell you, and once we've set this all up and we have insights, we will see exactly how well this worked. But Facebook, at the moment, can only tell you what happened in Facebook. It can tell you, 5,000 people saw this on Tuesday, and 2,000 saw it on Wednesday, and 700 clicked, but that's as far as it can tell you. It can't tell you that they went to your website, saw the product, added to cart, and bought it. It can't tell you that. It can only tell you what's on your website. Unless 
you do a pixel, which is optional, which is a bit of a setup. We don't have time to talk about it, but you can educate yourself here. If you set a conversion tracking pixel, which says it's a small piece of code that you add to your website, then Facebook can fully track the person going from Facebook to your website to the checkout screen. It is a little complicated, honestly, but you want to go to the help screen and read how to do it and maybe get your tech guy to do it. And that will give you the full insight. Some 700 people saw this post with the $1 I spent, 20 of them clicked, and 7 of them bought, which gave me a profit of $500 from the $1 that I spent. It's optional in that you don't have to do it. We've already set this up for clients, so mine is ready to go. But yours is not ready to go yet because you have to set it up. Do you, you don't pay for this either. So you take it. What's that? Why not, take it? Why not take it? I would highly recommend to do it. It is a little technical to set it up, but I believe in you. Set it up, and then it'll give you more info. And then, of course, at the end, let's pay up. <laughs> Credit card, debit card, PayPal, whatever. Um, it will ask you to add a credit card if you don't have one, and then um, you can you can boost it. So then that will be shown to more people. With again, just to show you, one dollar. I've set this demographic that I've defined at the top one dollar. I'm going to reach about 540 people. That doesn't mean 540 sales. That could be seven sales, but I'm reaching 540 by spending one dollar. Yes. Totally effective. I saw the chart. Of, I showed the chart a moment ago. The little mountains of light yellow was without paying. The huge mountains of paying, of, of dark orange, was paying. And in the real world, I can go to that client and look at their cash register and see that on those dates more sales were made because more people saw that and they bought. It does so how work. do you work that out with your client? And that where's the payments coming from? Are they then logging in and making that payment? No, we're doing it for them, but we're using their credit card in their stead. That's part of the deal and the contract that we set up with a client. We will, be we will be running social media for you, and we will be engaging in Facebook boosting. The client understands that they will give us access to a credit card, to a business credit card or whatever, to pay for these posts, and we will suggest amounts of, amounts of budgets and such when it's approved by the client, and we will engage in Facebook you know, boosted posts. Yes? Uh, based on your findings and experience, um, how does Facebook compare with Google AdWords? Mm -hmm. um, do you have more, well, with Google AdWords, you only pay for it if the person clicks through. This mm -hmm. one, you're just, you're paying for the impressions, mm -hmm. but are you, are you exposing your posts to more eyeballs? That's hard to say per individual clients, but for us personally, both work okay. in various ways in various segments, because each one has a, a huge amount of cash of information to reach an audience. They both work. It's better to answer for you to try with both and set budgets with both and see which which works. They give you those insights and they see the twenty dollars I'm spending monthly on Facebook is not working. I'll keep it on Google and vice versa. And Twitter also has this. We didn't talk about it on Twitter, but Twitter also has boosting your tweets, reaching more of an audience by paying for your tweets to be found by more people. And does Facebook also have the ads? Too? Yeah. That's different than this. It's a little different because this one is about specifically showing this post to more people. What you're asking for is if we go over to if we go over to the triangle, manage ads. Many more ways to reach people. The one I showed you right now is one of the most direct and simple ways. Post something, get it found by more people. The more robust and complicated way that we usually spend more time on is over here on Manage Ads, where we can <clears throat> where we can reach people in many more different ways, and still for as little as a dollar. We don't have time to talk about it. I highly suggest you explore it. You're not bound to pay for anything until you click that button to boost or to buy. So don't click on anything until you've educated yourself. But uh, this is the modern way to reach people on Facebook. Hate to break it to you, but you've got to pay now. There's so many people on Facebook, and Facebook actively makes it difficult for us companies, even big companies, to reach an audience unless they pay. Yes. Well, when you do 
boost your post? What exactly happens? I mean, what does Facebook do? do you send your post to other people within your demographic? Or what yeah, basically that's the whole point. This post that I've said will work best for these demographics, Facebook will show this up to more people. When they're on their home screen and they're looking at their friends' stuff, they might see it within the middle of their friends' stuff. They may see it on the side. They may get an email about it. Whatever avenues that Facebook has, it'll try to show it to more people that really care about it. And you've probably seen this yourself. As you use Facebook, you're seeing the stuff of your friends and family, and once in a while you see stuff about this ad, and buy this, and subscribe to that. That's someone taking advantage of all of this uh, ads on, on Facebook. It's pretty It's pretty cost effective when you compare it to like print advertising mm -hmm. and, and the ability to target it. Yeah, that's the thing about all of this online stuff. All of these networks, we're giving away willingly, wittingly, unwittingly, we're giving away all this information about us. We have huge amounts of online profiles we don't even, we don't even know we have. These companies take advantage of that for a business. For personal, this might sound horrible. For a business, this is amazing. I can reach the exact people that I want. So for personal, if you don't like any of this data collection, short answer is delete it all. Don't get in any of these networks, unfortunately. Um, these, it's still the Wild West. All of these companies are figuring this out, and they're taking advantage of it being the Wild West. All of these pitfalls in, in privacy and such, it's, they, these companies use it to their advantage. And I you know, hate to be cynical, but they, they do. This is capitalism. This is how it works. We want to reach an audience. Don't you think that the, you know, the uh, real-world companies out there would kill for this information to know that my hamburger is going to get sold to these people if I only know that they're visiting San Diego for a famous weather and that they're 18 years old and that they like Star Wars, you know, in the real world, people, companies want that too. Here we have it at our fingertips on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, on Pinterest, on Instagram, on all of these things. That's the whole purpose of social media for us businesses. For personal, sharing cat pictures. For businesses, sharing cat pictures that will make me a profit. Last question, we've got to wrap it up. Um, so could you typically use something like that, I don't know, to like get people to sign up for your website, like yeah. RSS feed or something like that? Definitely. I can share some cool picture here, put a little text and a link back to your newsletter or whatever on your website, boost that, and yeah, that could get you more back to your site. I do have to give a big caveat though, Facebook does not like when you share a photo that has a lot of text, 20% text, it will tell you, your photo seems to have too much text. If I was going to boost this, it would reject it. This is more than 20% text. Well, literally, in the photo, how much space does your text take? Facebook can, can detect that, and it'll reject your ad. Does it recognize text, even if it's if the actual, if that's art, you know, it's like, that's an illustrator file or something? Yeah, it recognizes it. It's smart enough to read text. That's text. It'll see it and reject it. You don't know it might be the actual artwork or vector art? That's, that, that's the thing about it, that it is a little dumb, though. You might have added it as a very artistic aspect of, of it and such, but Facebook will see it as text and then they might get confused. So you could challenge these actually. You could It'll reject your ad, but you could challenge it and then someone eventually will review it and maybe give you thumbs up or thumbs down to publish it or not. But uh, usually avoid text. So at the moment we're out of time. I do have to wrap it up because there's a new class coming in right after us. We've learned a lot here. There's still more to learn. I do hope that you are checking out your own searching online, and I don't recall if I said it in this class, but I did mention uh, social the website socialmediaexaminer.com, right? Socialmediaexaminer.com. So I did say it before. Make sure you log in there once in a while and see what's new and what people are saying about what's new on Facebook, what's new on Twitter, what's new in social. Check that page out. Make sure you signed in today. If you came in a little bit late, there is a sign-in sheet. Make sure you signed in. If you are new today, make sure you took the sticker and registered on the website. Don't just take the sticker and assume you're enrolled. You register on the website or in person down there. We'll, come, we'll do this again next time with Pinterest. Don't forget your beverages, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> see you.